Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. I'm Eldrick Tinkatoyat, um, the communication strategist and digital marketing consultant at AdWriter. Now, I know I wanted to do initially in this video SMEs and apps. I think apps are brilliant ideas and brilliant ways to uh, to market your business and um, connect with the what do you call this uh, to connect with your customer segments but I think you know from yesterday's conversation uh, from my previous video I was talking about website now I guess the logical extension of that is SMEs websites and social media let's begin SMEs mean social sorry <laughs> SMEs are you in this particular video refer to small and medium enterprises small and medium businesses uh, of course SME can also mean subject matter experts so let's get that out of the way right in this video we're talking about small and medium enterprises it could be you it could be your business it could be your organization in my previous video, I explained how complex um, websites can be, as well as how simple websites can be. But in that discussion, what I didn't mention is where it goes from there. You see, we're living in 2021. Obviously, the next question people would have is, should I join social media? So just a recap, right, for the terms that I will be using. When I say website, website is a digital asset. It's your digital asset. At the same time, you also have subsets. Under your digital asset, you have your website. www, I mean, of course, www is World Wide Web, but anyway, you get a picture, right? You can have your apps. It's a digital asset. It's not a physical asset. It's made out of codes to reach to your customers and to allow your customers to reach you. Then you also have social media. Under social media, you can have multiple platforms. And this is where you have the likes of your Facebook, your YouTube, your TikTok, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and so on and so forth. You may also have instant, messenger, uh, instant messaging apps. We're looking at WhatsApp. We're looking at Snapchat. We also have Telegram. We have, you know what? I should just zoom in, don't you think so? Okay, let's go to this level. And let me clean that up a bit. Okay. Under instant messaging, oops, sorry wrong function under instant messaging we have whatsapp we have telegram you can have wechat which is technically a it's an intersection of im and social media you can have line you can have where people are quite often now discord that's much more clearer four minutes <laughs> so we're we were talking about website I am you know social media so the focus of here is as I said earlier on the lot the usual conversation is after someone or after an organization would have a bis a website they would also either e concurrently create a social media 
or later create a social media. It depends on when you establish your company. Now, more often than not, all these social media are created from a afterthought. It is a product of jumping on the bandwagon. Some companies, it doesn't matter whether it's large or small. You know, they want to jump on the bandwagon. They want to jump on the trend. They want to ride the wave, ride the trend. So they decide, hey, you know, let's have a TikTok and let's talk about how things, you know, how we can we can uh, we can push our content onto Twitter, onto t uh, TikTok, IG, YouTube, and so on and so forth. But for me as you know and that's why you see this little thing on our left here right you know I'm gonna to refer to it obviously I'm not I don't include the business model canvas for nothing for me jumping into social media digital assets or any form of communication including apps and instant messaging without understanding or without appreciating where it fits here in your organization is going to be a futile exercise. So once again, let me cross out things that we are not going to look at. We are not going to look at key partners. We will not be looking at key activities. We are not looking at key resources. We won't be looking at cost structure. This is the money you make and your revenue stream okay however we will be looking at this four interesting boxes okay value proposition I'm going to give you a summary of what value proposition is uh, value proposition is essentially why people are buying from you the why are they buying from you because what you offer it's not your product or services by the way the why they're getting that product and services is it because you're convenient is it because you customize is it because you're cheap i mean come on price sensitive customers they'll do that why not is it or on the other extreme end they're buying your product because it's the most expensive top of the line and you can justify it because it's uh, you, you, uh, that particular, it's the technology behind it, it's the customization or what have you, or the materials used. Then you have your customer relationship. Basically, how do you relate with your customers in terms of um, how do you, what sort of a relationship will you build with your peop with your target segments, your customer segments? Is it personalized? Is it dedicated? Are you creating, uh, do you rely on automation? I'm just reading what you can see on the examples there. Right? Then it goes to your customer segments. Who are your target audience your TA your CS however whatever you can call them channels of course you can have uh, communication can channels and you can also have distribution channels when I say communication it includes touch points so when I say touch points you can think of if you're having a physical touch point that means you have a physical shop, a kiosk, a stall, a store, which your customers can go to and purchase whatever your product service has to offer or what your company has to offer. Right. Okay. But at the end of the day, it goes back to, I think by now you will know, I will also focus on customer segment why let's say you are selling a niche product you're selling a niche product you are selling say dear lord um 
what is a good niche product okay let's say you are selling uh, protein shakes who is the protein shakes for okay I'm gonna scroll that out because that shouldn't be there I'm sorry you're selling protein shakes uh, let me just erase that first You want to sell protein shakes and then you are trying you need to um, you are selling protein shakes to a certain group of customers let's say you are your protein shake is consumed I mean it's good it's beneficial for those in their golden years whatever formula formulation of the protein shake allows them to regenerate energy replace um replace loss mass because of whatever illness that they're having it is compliant with di you know it's good it, it's safe for diabetic patients it's safe for people with high blood pressure i'm just saying right i don't know if such a product exists or if it, there's any real correlation between protein shake and blood pressure will tiktok be your suitable channel at this stage i would have to say no not in 2021 not yet i suppose why it's because of the perception that m the, m the audience have the mass market has towards tiktok as people slowly migrate and accept tiktok number one because those who uh, the age you know people who like it started from the teens then they move to their uh, college years and from the college they want to be hip it trickles up to parents and all that i mean come on i'm in my 30s i'll probably be considered a dad or something i mean i, ho I have peers who are dads right uh, their kids would be interested in tiktok eventually they would be not because for the same interests, but the target segment in 2021 if you're looking at those in their golden years i highly doubt these people would be on tiktok on the other hand i would recommend or i would suggest a 10 year old company who is the 10 year old company or 10 year old platform one of it is facebook another one is youtube what are the odds that these people consume content through this protein shakes so you use this you again looking at your business model you incorporate whatever social media asset that you are trying to build into the purpose that it is supposed to do within your business model is it trying to communicate is it trying to educate is it trying to sell is it trying to be uh, to solicit inquiries what sort of a outcome that you have in my first video in this 30-day uh, challenge i spoke on how uh, it's supposed to support your your it's supposed to support a business function your business to uh, to achieve your business objectives in your business model i'm not going to deviate from that in fact when i deal with many clients i would ask them how does this fit in your business model where does this fit in the sales cycle so if you're going for facebook and youtube then i my question for you would be so let me move to the side there okay so let's let's put those uh, points into onto paper onto screen number one who is your ta your target audience number two are they on that platform specifically social media number three what do they do on that platform four what 
is their perception towards that platform okay the reason i i bring this up is because remember that tiktok okay tiktok is a trend right now come on let's let's face it let's let's be realistic tiktok is the in thing but what's the perception of your target audience if your target audience are those in their golden years in their who would consume who would purchase your product or your service what's your perception towards tiktok what i can give you that for now at this stage we 30 and above look down on people on tiktok for now although there are many of my peers and in fact i am on tiktok as well but it's more of enjoying content you know and what do i do on those platforms what sort of videos do they consume if they're on tiktok if they're on youtube what videos do they do uh, they search for there what sort of are they looking for snippets of old programs snippets of old um, sitcoms or are they using it to learn more about you know other stuff uh, learn about knowledge learn about peer things okay for me i use youtube to it depends um i have two phones right one phone uh, would be dedicated to all this mythology stuff um stories of the uh, yeah, I would watch um, Studio C on it. I would watch uh, Mythology Explained. I would watch those sort of things. And sometimes, yes, I would check out, okay, how, I guess I, I'm into piercings. Um, I have piercings. So, okay, piercing, nipple piercing, for example, the end piercing, um, ear piercing, aftercare. How do you do this? How long do you do that? How are things supposed to look like? How will, and that's my behavior on youtube when that's what i do on youtube and that i am definitely like many a few hundred million other uh, internet users i'm on youtube as in i'm watching i'm consuming the content on youtube but then again did i fit that demographic that you wanted am i your target audience the answer is no so what would your how would your target audience behave are they on that there are many ways for you can for you to find th those data um kantar is one uh simple statistica um and a few others that i can't remember on the top of my head uh, they would come up i think it was uh, e-marketer they would have these statistics they would have the studies they would have the resources they would look into okay behavior here um okay with the pandemic what's the, how are businesses transitioning online how was the journey was the transition successful or not that sort of thing then this is purely on your target audience right i haven't gone into anything operational then after that you have to ask yourself i purposely use blue number one Social media and blogs, even blogs hosted on your website, are expected to be current. Whenever there's a public post, when I say public post, it could be a profile, it could be on your personal Facebook and the audience is public. It could be on your Facebook page, it could be on your Twitter, which, where your Twitter account is not private. It's public, it's searchable, it's navigable by uh, search engines, can crawl it and can find content from it, can pull the content, that is public. So, how current do you want to be? How much resources are you dedicating? Number three. What is the purpose? Number four. Okay, let me just go through bit by bit. How, okay, how current you're going to be? When I say how current you're going to be, so search engines expect social media as well as blogs to be current, as current as possible. Because that's the nature of social media. You update it as you go. You update it with the latest information unlike websites which are generally static 
save some events page, news page, and all that. So how do you want to, how current you want to be? So to do that, you could go once a week. It can be weekly. It can be monthly. It can be daily. Okay, so if you're doing daily, what uh, what's going out on Monday? What's going out on Tuesday? Yeah, are you going to have a consistent theme every week? Are you going to change the theme on a monthly basis? But yeah, but it's a daily post. Then you have to ask how much resources are you dedicating? And I'm saying time. I'm saying knowledge. Uh, I had one client once upon a time, a holding company, an investment company. They don't have any. Okay, so holding companies. would usually have operating companies or opcos opcos 1 op 2 opco 3 right holding companies generally do not face consumer and they do not face businesses so they are neither b2c nor b2b they are not this usually the operating companies the operational companies its subsidiaries would be either B2C or B2B. Okay, quickly, what is B2C? B2C is business to consumer, meaning the business is selling to people like you and I. Milkshakes, protein shakes, those are examples of B2C products. It could be FMCG, I mean, fast moving consumer goods. B2B are essentially services that is purchased or products that are purchased by other businesses. This could be raw materials. This could be uh, equipment like cranes. You, would, you and I wouldn't purchase a crane, not unless you or I own or work in a construction company or in a, in a logistics company where we need cranes. So that's what i mean by b2b and b2c okay i've had this one uh, client a holding company it does not have shareholder holders it doesn't have public shareholders per se so it's not a publicly listed company it doesn't sell it's not a b2b or a b2c it doesn't sell per se it is done by the opcos and your question was should we have a facebook page Facebook, as you and I know, is very, very consumer centric. Yes, you can have you can close business deals on uh, on Facebook, but at this stage, no. What's the purpose? What are you trying to communicate? Oh, I, we thought it would be good because people are saying we should be. What purpose does it do? Will you be dedicating resources? You have thirty people in your unit right now. You have 30, 20 or 30, I can't remember. Yet everyone is complaining and you're complaining you don't have enough hands. You have to do your charity, your CSR, your corporate social responsibility. You have to do communications for your opcos. You have to do this, you have to do that. So imagine hiring just one headcount onto your payroll just to sit down and look at YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and so on and so forth. That's your job. To manage the Twitter, to manage the... Um, your social media asset someone has to post it whether it's daily monthly weekly especially when you're talking about twitter where it's more spontaneous it's very instantaneous people are resp it's more responsive compared to facebook facebook you can be a bit slow fine but twitter people expect your responses to be as quick as possible so you can't just hire one headcount. What happens if he goes on leave? Who's going to cover him? Eventually you hire two. Then eventually they will, their job functions will, uh, will be amalgamated into other functions. I'll, oh, this, these two execs are free. You know what? Let's rope them into help, uh, helping us doing this. Uh, this event, that event. Hey, you've been to that event. Why don't you do this? Eventually they will forsake what they need to do. They will not do deliver the tasks that they were hired for. Okay. Uh, so how much resources are you willing to dedicate? Then what's the purpose of those social media assets? And this ties back to where in the customer journey or sales cycle does it fit? At the end of the day, jumping onto YouTube, jumping onto Facebook, jumping onto any social media is an investment. 
it's either an investment with returns or an expense with no returns. You're operating it on a loss. Where in the customer journey or the sales cycle does it fit in? Are you building awareness again? Are you soliciting inquiries? Are you expecting people to book appointments? Are you building a database? What is your business function? You see, so that's why at the end of the day, social media, as trivial as it seems, Facebook, IG, Twitter, TikTok for that matter. Oh, speaking of TikTok. Who is the face of the account? Okay, brands can escape when it comes to social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. You can you can really escape. But when it comes to TikTok, when it comes to IG, people want to see people. People want to see others. So who is going to be the face of the account? Uh, American Express, Visa, and MasterCards are good examples of how uh, they showcase people, but not people per se, as the face of their cards. Meaning uh, there would be a promotion on because of my, uh, you know, having dinner, a lovely dinner with my wife or my husband. And at the corner of the table is that credit card with their logo. It could be a, um, Amex, it could be Visa, it could be MasterCard. So you s- it gives a human touch. Uh, the World Health Organization is a good example. It's another interesting example. The World Health Organization and the World Economic For- Forum. They have TikTok, they have LinkedIn, they have, of course, Facebook. On TikTok, they feature stock photos. They feature snippets of uh, press conferences, of events related to the WHO. They showcase these snippets. Can you afford to compile if you can't get your CEO, your chairman or your comms manager to dance whatever dance it is? Can you afford to regularly uh, subscribe to royalty, paid, you know, paid content or stock photos, stock videos to run your content again going back to frequency right what resources how are you going to execute it how are you going to interact interaction social media is all about interaction social is the key component there when a particular platform is too commercialized people will resent it they will move to the next best thing so that's why you don't hear me advocating a particular platform in and treat it like the Bible of the day, or the, the go-to platform of the day. No, it changes over time. And it goes back to your, t- uh, your target audience, your key, um, your customer segment. Right. Face, way in the customer journey, sales cycle, you know, um, frequency. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. But I hope that by diving into these questions, uh, we answer or it begs to answer, begs you to answer these different questions and makes you consider what you need to do. So the other item is that before I end the video, let's say you have a website, you have a storefront, you are on an e-com platform a platform it could be alibaba it could be lazada shopee um, ebay amazon what have you and you have your social media my question to you now is what's the relationship what's the relationship between these different items can you synchronize the messaging yet customize synchronize and customize simultaneously remember what i said earlier on tiktok has a different format uh, youtube has a different format 
um, Facebook has a different format it's more versatile but yeah, you, you get a picture so how where is it what does it do does it lead people to your storefront does it lead people to your website does it lead people to the e-com what's the purpose if you don't have a website okay fine then the function I reckon would be amalgamated between so social media will play the role of the website then how do you structure the content how you develop content how do you keep yourself current right so all this has to be asked with an eye not just on the trends as you see me draw a little rectangle around the business model canvas it all ties back to what is the purpose of your business where are you going for the next two to five years what's the plan where would these platforms these digital assets your website your social media assets fit in the picture do you have the resources you need to support creating that branch do you need to outsource Do you need to hire what limitations what challenges do you face don't put when you do that SWOT analysis strength weakness opportunity threat don't give don't ask for a SWOT analysis of Facebook no that you can google that come on but use that in light of your with the lens of your business model your business model is that magnifying glass to see what strength can you really get yeah you have I don't know I can't remember you have a billion people on Facebook yes that's a strength that's the opportunity fine but what does that mean to you if you're just a local business and you have no intentions of scaling to cross-border trade or cross-border um, commerce okay you don't plan to go on to Shopee you are happy and content in selling to local communities and that's okay that's okay that because that's your business model you don't have to be the Walmarts of the world you don't have to be the Ikeas of the world in fact Ikea is not open in every damn um, major city uh, uh, state capital city or you know or towns it's only selected places where you get Ikea it's only selected places where you get Disneyland or Universal Studios or Louis Vuittons or Yves Saint Laurent and all these different brands right you don't you don't just throw it and hopefully something sticks no it goes back to your business model if you're an artisan coffee shop you may not want to sell your stuff to if you're an artisan coffee shop here in Kuala Lumpur you may not want to sell your coffee cup your mugs of coffee to Timbuktu I mean it's nice but no it's not practical you're not Starbucks unless you want to be Starbucks fine go ahead if that's not your business direction that's not your business model why okay so you need to see that through the lens of your business model then you see the sort of the channels it answers would it answer would it would it give you would it satisfy you would the answers satisfy you would it would the answers to these questions satisfy you in light of all of that Anyway, it is 33 minutes going to 34. Um, thank you very much if you've been following my videos all this while. I really appreciate it. Uh, do subscribe to the channel. Give a like. Do like my page on Facebook. Uh, it's Advert Writer. But more importantly, I'm going to type my email address. If you just if you want to you know, reach out, just have a chat over whatsapp sorry not whatsapp telegram or an email you can do that we can arrange a zoom call of sorts uh, for free as usual drop me a line uh, drop me an email at eldrake at advertwriter.com or you can send a telegram message to at eldrake toyat And 
we'll take the conversation from there so do share this video with people you think would benefit you know people who who you whenever you heard someone said hey, I, i don't know whether i should go into tiktok i don't know whether i should go on to youtube or twitter share this video with them i urge you to share it with them give them some prompts let these questions earlier that i raised let them see and consider give them that idea and clari- uh, help them gain some clarity by sharing this with them uh, once again i'm eldrick tinkatoyat from edward writer thank you very much have a great day ahead have a good night bye